After surgery, I had some problems with this area of my body. I think this is what we're hoping. We can alternate between the port and the fistula to give me more freedom, to decrease the infection risk, and to give this port a longer lifespan. Okay, sorry, I was starting this video and my camera has a flip screen so I can see myself while I'm vlogging and I was just realizing that my hair has gotten a little bit crazier since I did it this morning. I don't think y'all have ever seen me with this hairstyle, the double braid. I don't know why, but I think it may have been as long as high school since I last did it this way, which I don't know why, it's a nice easy thing to do. But anyways, um, this video is not about my braids it is about my fistula some of y'all have been asking for an update i haven't given an update yet because there's nothing really to update on but since y'all have been asking i will give what info i can real quick before i proceed i just want to point out that choices we make in my healthcare may not be typical but it's what we feel is best for my specific case and everybody's treatment will differ. Sometimes I get a little weary, 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 I think it's weary, sharing things because I'm worried people are gonna feel like, oh, if I'm not getting that exact treatment, then I'm not getting the best for me. And medical advice definitely should not come from anyone except your medical team. And I was talking to Mary about this, if y'all know Mary Fry from The Fry Life, she had a saying that I really liked, um, shoot. Ah, she says, I am, I'm describing, not prescribing. So us vloggers, when we're talking about our health, we're not saying what works for everyone. We're just describing what works for us, not prescribing, if that makes sense. I just, I liked her saying. Um, but anyways, please just keep that in mind. This is my personal situation. What we feel works best for me may not be best for you, vice versa. Everyone is different. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, so just a little bit of catch up. October 24th of 2018, so a few months ago, I had surgery to remove my port, which was malfunctioning, place a new port and a fistula, which is when you connect an artery and a vein, so the extra pressure makes the vein big and strong. We are calling this a fistula because that's the best word for it, but my surgeon told me it's not like specifically a fistula because fistulas have other criteria to them like flow rate and whatnot and mine doesn't all she did was do a surgery to make this vein here big and strong so i can sustain peripheral ivs again typically sticking me with a peripheral iv is hopeless my veins are terrible the ivs blow i'm a hard stick but with this one not sure how well y'all can see it you can see it pretty well this is the surgical scar and this is the vein you can feel it super well i took my mother-in-law's hand and i was like do you want to feel this she's like okay put her hand here she went oh, what is that like an alien something coming out of me okay sorry gosh i hope y'all can relate to my sense of humor anyways and it doesn't really look that different. There, you can see it. It's, it's pretty well defined. So when we go to stick this with peripheral IV, it's an easy stick and it won't blow. It'll work well. So the reason I said I don't really have an update is because we haven't used my fistula yet. Fistulas need time to grow and mature before they're ready to use. And technically, mine is ready to use now, but after surgery, I had some problems with this area of my body. I think there was just a lot of like trauma to it from the two surgeries and my arm became very stiff. I couldn't straighten it. I'm having weird pain, pulling sensations, muscle spasms, and I had to go to physical therapy to work on this and correct it. Thankfully, I no longer need the PT, but I'm still continuing with the exercises because it's not fully resolved. Now, as far as surgical complications go, this is pretty good for me. It's not really that big of a deal and it's slowly getting better. And I told my medical team, 
I want to hold off on using this until it's resolved. I don't want to do anything to potentially make it worse. And they agreed that would be a good idea. Now, hopefully in a few short weeks, I'll be ready to use this. I'm honestly doing so much better, but like just the other night, I was having so much pain here. And the other day, the entire day, I had this weird pulling sensation. So not quite there yet, but almost. So then you may ask, what are the future plans regarding my fistula and my port? Something you need to know is that a central line carries a high risk of infection. The highest point of infection risk is when you are accessing it or changing the needle. A port can stay accessed up to seven days a week. So depending on how many times you need IV therapy within a week is how you know whether you're gonna stay accessed 24 seven or access and deaccess with each treatment. Right now I need IV fluids for my dysautonomia at least three to four times a week. It does not make sense. It is not safe to access and deaccess for each one of those. So I'm accessed 24 seven right now. However, I would like to not be accessed 24 seven because that's also an infection risk. And I want more freedom. Being accessed all the time is tedious. So we are planning to use the fistula for my fluids. I will access it, run the fluids overnight, take it out. A fistula can sustain multiple pricks within a week. And when I say I will access it, we mean Judd. Judd is going to learn from my nurse how to do it. Then you may be wondering about my other IV therapies, like IV medications I have on an as needed basis, Zofran for nausea and vomiting and Benadryl for mast cell related symptoms and reactions. Well, thanks in large part to medical marijuana, I've made progress with my nausea and vomiting and I'm not really needing the IV Zofran as much anymore. And thanks to my Zolar injections, which I get every three weeks, I'm not needing IV Benadryl as much either, which is amazing. Now the mast cell issues are not gone completely, but they're more manageable with other forms of treatment like antihistamines through my feeding tube. And if I'm going to have a more severe reaction or symptoms that require the use of IV Benadryl, the likely time that'll happen for me is in that third week of my Zolar schedule when the medication isn't as fresh in my system. The consistent pattern that's presented itself for the past few shots is the first two weeks. That third week, little iffy. So for safety and practicality, I will have my port accessed for that third week of Zolaire. Why won't we move it to two weeks? Well, just for my personal situation, we are keeping it at three because it is providing a lot of benefits and Zolaire can have negative effects not like the zolar hangover i get with each injection i'm talking about detrimental effects long term to your body so if we can keep it at three weeks we want to keep it at three weeks rather than two we just personally feel that's what is best for me anyways besides all that i also have my ivig that is something i will always need to use my port for because it's a lot of infusing i do a liter or two of fluids before the ivig then the four hour ivig infusion then another liter or two of fluids afterwards i have iv pre-meds and post-meds so yes we will always use my port for ivig and right now i get it every two weeks we are considering bumping it to every three weeks depending on the stability of my lab work, which I hope we can do so because then we can time my Zolaire shot to be the day before or the day after my IVIG and I will be accessed for that third week of Zolaire, which also happens to be when I get my IVIG and the timing would work out really well because in a sense, my schedule for port and fistula use could be two weeks with the fistula and then that third week with my port accessed, which I feel would just give me a lot more freedom. It'd be less infection risk. My port would have a longer lifespan because this one didn't last very long since it was constantly accessed. So this is what we're hoping. We can alternate between the port and the fistula to give me more freedom, to decrease the infection risk, and to give this port a longer lifespan. Now, of course, if I am flaring or feeling I need more IV therapies or end up in the hospital, knock on wood, or have surgery, knock on wood, a procedure, whatever. Of course, I can access my port. It's not a strict schedule or anything. This is just some treatment plans and ideas we hope to see in the near future, but it's really about freedom, 
flexibility, lowering infection risk by utilizing the two options. And hopefully within a few weeks or definitely within the next few months, we can start using the fistula so I can get the best extent of both options. So that is all the info I have for y'all. Please don't think that fistulas or I feel like I need to call it something else because my surgeon's like, it's not specifically a fistula. I'm like, a big vein. I'm Whatever, maybe I'll call it like Judy or something. Just kidding. I'm getting off track. Um, <laughs> they come with their own set of risks. Like every treatment and choice you make will have pros and cons. And this is not really typical for what I'm using it for, but I've talked with my medical team. We've laid out all the options and we felt this is what is best for me and I'm so thankful with the progress I'm making in my health I'm just even if it's thinking outside of the box try and find the best way to live my best life so hope that answered the questions and curiosities y'all had and with that I will say goodbye and thanks for joining us on our adventure